All right, so here's a go at reading together to look at the lab manual. I'm going to give you a chance to make sure you've seen the highlights in here. So uh, I've circled a few things on this page. Highlighted in the middle is the random variable concept. We're going to focus on that a little bit. The variables that we're measuring, uh, you know, lots of things in nature look like this. If I asked you what the flight speed of ducks were, you could look it up in the encyclopedia. It might say 44 miles per hour, but you know that mallard ducks fly at a variety of different speeds depending on which duck you measure. So if you measured 100 ducks, they would be spread from some faster and some slower, but there'd be like an average speed. And so um, we call these random variables. These are, um, it's a variable that does not have a single fixed value, but can take on a set of possible values, each with its own associated probability. That's a good phrase to memorize. You should memorize it. That's how you explain what it is. Um, now, the variation in that is caused by a lot of things in biological organisms. It's often explained by things like differences in genetics and differences in environment. And those are genetic variants and environmental variants. And, and the way that they interact can produce different flight speeds in different individual ducks. Um, so the randomness that's in the random variable isn't always just crazy noise. It can be identified in some cases as having a source. So um, that's kind of good to know as well. Um, not for this class, but perhaps in your upper division classes. Here we'd like you to look at examples of random variables. I already wrote some in and I didn't erase them, so here they are. You know, I chose running speed of wild pigs. Um, those would be collared peccaries, the height of adult spruce trees, the weight of house cats from fat to thin. Um, you know, you can choose your own and you should write a few random variables in there. So I, I want to be specific about this concept that we call a parent distribution. Um, the parent distribution is an important concept in this class because um, it's a term that I'm using to describe um, what is called in statistics the population. And in this case, it would be like all the mallard ducks throughout history and in time. They're here today and here tomorrow and all on the planet. Every single mallard duck, we put them all into one big measurement. We could have a big graph that shows the sort of uh, the random variable of mallard duck flight speed, but it's really not possible to do that, nor practical in most cases. And the name we give to that in this class is the parent distribution because most of the time we take a sample. And if you want to think of that as a child, I suppose you can, but the sample is, you know, comes from the parent and the parent represents the sort of true infinite population that exists in nature. And we're always trying from our sample to estimate uh, the properties of the sample, like its mean and its variance, and try to use those to estimate the parent distribution properties like the mean and the variance. So um, I think that's an, an important way of looking at it. We will use a, uh, uh, um, well, let's, let's go on to the next page here. Uh, when we graph these things, we'll look at them as a frequency distribution. And uh, here you can see a frequency distribution, and it looks like uh, this is the height of humans. And what you'll see is it makes this nice sort of bell-shaped curve thing here. And in this drawing, the variance, which we'll talk about later, accurately represents this distance across here. And in the middle is this term I'm going to call x bar, which is also known as the mean. Right? But you can see that not all people have the same height. Some are taller, um, a few people are really tall, a few people are really short, but most people fall here in the middle of this area. And that's sort of what a normal distribution looks like, um, uh, what we call the bell curve. Okay. Um, moving on, we will ask you, by the way, to make one of these as part of your homework from this lab. So take a good look. Now, sampling. We're going to look, when we sample, we take that sample from the parent distribution and we take some measures. And one of those measures is the measure of central tendency. Uh, the measure of central tendency is the mean, right? Uh, so where is the middle? And the mean then has these, uh, uh, is this important number, um, which most of you are familiar with. Um, also known as the average. Now I'm going to write the formula for that in a couple of different ways here. I'm going to write down that you take, um, you can add up the observations and you can divide by the number of observations, right? Um, that is one way of calculating the mean. 
or the average, right? Um, that is red as we write X bar for that, a little bar on top. Um, I'm also going to show you another way of writing that, and that way looks like this. It's a, it's, it uses this thing called a sum sign, which is called sigma, and it has this notation from I equals 1 to N. So the bottom number is where you start, the top number is where you end, and then what you're going to take is you're going to take, uh, oop, it appears that I've colored my pen, X sub I, and we'll divide all those numbers by N. N here is the number of observations. Let's clear some of that up right now. What that looks like is, let's say that X, you have some observations, X1 is equal to 10, X2 is equal to 20, X3 is equal to 15, and X4 is equal to 15. So those are four observations. And the little number below the X is what is called the I. So that is, X, this is XI um, at the top here, all right? And this is XN at the end. So it's from XI, which is the first one, to XN, which is the last one. So the last one is also the number of observations, right? That's where we get the N in this uh, average formula. So the formula is pretty straightforward. We're just going to use it for some other things later, so I write it down. When we add these numbers together, um, we get 30 and 30 is 60. We divide by 4, and that equals 15 is the X bar. Okay, so that is how we calculate the average. And the formula for the average is this formula here. That is the actual formula. All right. Um, formula for the mean. Um, now, we're also interested in this other value of how do the points vary around the mean, like how are they spread out around the middle. And there's a couple of ways of doing that. Uh, one of those is called the range, and the range is pretty self-explanatory. We subtract the maximum uh, minus the minimum, and that is the range of the numbers, but it doesn't tell us a lot about the properties of the numbers in the middle. Um, and the variance, as you'll see in a minute, can be written in words. Um, and actually, um, you're going to have to see the C, the crazy dart video. Crazy dart video shows you why we use the variance. But uh, um, Well, all right, I'll shortcut to it. I'll just tell you that this is the average in words squared deviation from the mean, ASDM, if you will, and that is really what the variance is. Uh, the formula for the variance um, can be written, and, and we can do that for you here to get it done. I also do recommend you watch the video, the crazy dart video, because it does tell you quite a bit about the variance. But for those of you that want to jump straight to it, I'm going to use my sigma sign here from i equals 1 to n. I'm going to take the sum of each x sub i observation, subtracting the mean, squaring that value, adding all those values up, and then dividing all those values by n. As you'll see in the box to come pretty soon, the true uh, variance of a sample formula, we use sometimes n minus 1 in the bottom. Um, you can do that because when you're calculating the variance of a sample, you're really trying to estimate the parent distribution. And this little number here is the number that corrects your variance so that it's an unbiased estimate of the parent distribution variance, not of the variance of your particular sample. So that's nice to know. But in this class, you can use n or n minus 1, and that would be fine. Oh, here on the next page, we're going to move on to standard deviation, and I'm just going to put a hold. We'll stop this talk right there, and you guys should watch the crazy dark game.